<clears throat> We're back. $80,000 for one Bitcoin, boys. One single Bitcoin, 80,000 fucking dollars. It's hard to believe that we're here. Um, I've been in this game for a long time. Uh, I bought Bitcoin very low. I sold it also too low. Um, you know, I've said this before. If I just held all the Bitcoin I ever had and never touched it, I'd have more money than I do now. Um, but, uh, you know, the temptation to trade is there. I've done well trading, uh, but it's hard to outperform this market sometimes, guys. And that's something that's very important to remember when the conditions are like they are now. The only way that you're going to lose money when the market is making all-time highs and trending up aggressively generally is leverage, right? That's going to be your biggest enemy right now. I'm not saying don't use it. I'm not saying don't trade, right? I don't expect any of you to just not trade at all. Um, there's always going to be that desire to you know, try and outperform the market uh, and take trades and compound on top of what you're already doing, and that's fine. Uh, but what I am saying is um, just be careful, right? Because if you have spot, let's say you have five spot Bitcoin, right? And that's your portfolio, like your, 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 your spot holdings, five BTC. BTC does this, you still have five Bitcoin. And then if it eventually does this, guess what? You still have five Bitcoin. None of that has changed. Now, the value of that Bitcoin has changed, of course, right? But you're not going to lose money in theory with price fluctuations. And if you believe we're going higher, if you believe we're going to 100K, you don't want to lose any of that Bitcoin, right? Be no different than if you're, let's say, instead of five Bitcoin, you have 500K cash. Right. Well, down here, you can buy more Bitcoin, but up here you can buy less. Right. So in a bull run, in a bull market, when things are bullish, you want to ideally be holding spot. That way, if the market's appreciating, the value of your assets are appreciating with it. The risk and the issue that many of you are going to run into is let's say you think Bitcoin's going to trade higher. So you still have a five BTC port, right? And you think we're going to go higher. So you long here some Bitcoin. You take a, you know, a, a five Bitcoin long. So now you're effectively 1x long your port, 2x long really because you also own five Bitcoin. And then it does this and then it goes here and then you close for a loss, right? You lose, I don't know, 30 grand. Now you have 40 grand. Now you have four and a half Bitcoin, right? Assume you're using coin margin perps. Now you've lost that Bitcoin. Whereas if price then rallies here, you have less money because you've actually lost some of that Bitcoin. So you want to be very, very, very careful with the leverage. I'm not saying you can't do it. You're going to see some insane screenshots. There's a couple guys already who I've seen just today post some insane multi-million dollar P&Ls. It's nuts. You're going to continue to see that throughout the cycle. And you're going to see tons of stuff that you might have previously thought were top signals as we continue to trade higher. But I, I behoove you to be very, very, very careful using leverage, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Because the last thing you want to do right now is lose your coins. And the only way you're really going to do that trading is using leverage. Okay? So be very, very careful. If you're going to use leverage, be very careful. Make sure you know what you're doing. If you want to trade, what a good idea might be is set up another account, a sub account, separate from your spot holdings. That way those holdings aren't at risk in case something happens, like you go wrong, right? You fuck up, you lose some money. You're not losing that Bitcoin that you've worked so hard to accumulate or whatever the spot coin it is that you're holding, Solana, Ethereum, Peanut. Imagine if I held Peanut, six mil. Another fumble, people are asking me, I, 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 people are like, where's the update? I posted, I fumbled 6 million on peanut fucking Binance. I, I fumbled like a million. I'm like, whatever, it's dead. Binance lists it. Now that would have been 6 mil. And the first comment I see is some guy going, when market update? Let me grieve, bro. Let me cry. Anyways, chief bag fumbler reporting for duty yet again. I'm going to hit one of these one time. I feel like I should have good karma. I haven't scammed anyone. I've been posting videos for fucking six years on YouTube. 
helping people learn to trade. I had a guy yesterday show me that he made a half million dollars and said he learned from me and he's thankful for following my videos. He made a half mil. We had a guy in the last live stream say he made eight mil following me uh, taking that popcat trade. Like you think I, you think old Maine would get to hold on to one, you know, would be sweet anyways. Um, but yeah, prices are going up. Things are good, man. It's hard to complain. We were expecting this. This is what we wanted to see. Now, the question is, how do you get in, right? When price looks like this on the low time frame, right? Where it's just aggressively trending higher. It doesn't really give you that dip. This is a divergence, 100% on the RSI, right? And people are getting blown out anyways, right? These divs get blown out. You're looking at ETH. ETH has put in, I think, like seven straight green 12-hour candles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? And the low time frames, like where do you get in? How do you get in? So here's how it works, right? When price is marking up super aggressively like this, you have a couple of options. One, you play on the lower time frames because when the high time frame looks like this, right? There's no, you, you can't enter here, right? It could trade up to 90K before giving a meaningful pullback, right? So you got to go to the low time frame. It's the only way. You got to get in on these little interday pullbacks, right? So we had one here, right? Trended up, little pullback, some sideways, another move up, little pullback, and then it ripped again. These are the only opportunities you're going to get to get in on the lower time frame. So if that's something you're comfortable doing, by all means, you can do it. The other option is you be patient, which is very difficult to do. It's a little easier when you do have spot in your position and you're not like completely sidelined to say, okay, you know what? A pullback is going to come on the higher time frame. It's just a matter of when. So I'm going to say, okay, well, on the 12 hour, we have some support around here now. Okay. And then we also still have that high time frame zone that I'd marked out in the previous video. I don't know if it will come back here. That's the risk you run with the high time frame. But if we do get some sort of crazy pullback, right, you want to be prepared. So I know those options aren't necessarily great if you don't feel comfortable on the low time frame or perhaps you're like, hey, I don't want to miss because there's a good chance that we don't ever test this and we just and then leg up again. Right. So then what do you do? My opinion is that I'm playing this kind of on like a time basis right now. Now, I, of course, could be wrong, right? I know guys like there's still credible crypto. He's been getting assaulted online because God forbid he's bearish uh, and we're at all time high. I mean, let the man trade. And guess what? If he's wrong, he's going to lose money. So who fucking cares? But the reason people like him leave, right, is because when they share all this alpha and when they're right, people put them on a pedestal like they're God and then they get something wrong and people are attack them. Oh, credible cryptos wreck, blah, blah, blah. I mean, the guy's nailed all of these moves leading up to this. He was calling for all-time highs like way back here. So I don't know. Anyways, so he, he thinks that this could be a short. I don't know if he thinks it goes like this, but I mean, you know, maybe we do get that move back to here. I don't know. But I'm in the camp of I would rather we just had a weekly break outside of this range. So I would rather just continue to long until proven otherwise. Like if as, if it dips, I'm going to look to long the dips because that to me seems to be like the in-trend, the obvious play. My analysis right now is that I don't think we get any significant dips probably until Trump goes in office, the inauguration, which is early January. That's kind of the thesis that I'm working with mentally right now. So the way that I'm going to apply that is any sort of interday pullbacks that we get, I'm going to be looking to bid. So I'm staying long. I'm going to remain long unless something happens that makes me want to do otherwise. I'm going to remain long. And if we get any sort of interday dips, 10, 15 percent, I'm not saying necessarily on Bitcoin, but Bitcoin pulled back what? Like 3 percent here. Solana did seven Doge did 15, I think, right? So like there's, these are the dips I'm talking about. They might not seem huge on Bitcoin, but on a lot of these altcoins, which I know most of you are playing, right? These, these can be quick and fast and dirty, right? Came right into that H1OB, bounced immediately like 20%. So that's kind of what I'm going to be watching, right? If we get any sort of interday pullbacks, 
I'm going to be looking to long and just add exposure into January. That's kind of the game plan. Now, if we do get a larger correction, um, I'm going to try and take advantage of it, of course. Um, but for now, I'm not just going to, you know, sit here and be like, well, I'm not longing unless it comes back to this. Right. Like, cause it might, right. But it might not. So I don't want to be frozen out of, you know, the market and all trades if it doesn't come back to the exact spot that I want it to. Right. So that's kind of the plan. Be very careful with the leverage. You know, you don't want to give your coins back. You definitely do not want to give your coins back. Um, but uh, things are good, man. We should be happy. Everyone should be stoked. I hope everyone's making money. If you're going to DM me that you've made a fucking massive amount of money, send your boy a tip. Tip the fucking dealer. You know, I don't charge you guys anything for this shit. Um, Solana, like, for example, I'd love to long it down here, but I don't think it should go that low. Like, if we're really bullish on Solana, I think the lowest it should go is here. Right? Like that's the lowest it should go. So you like get like a run of this and then back up or you get a move above this high and then a move down to here. Either of those would be a long for me. But this kind of fair value gap here that we have, this massive inefficient move, if we're really strong, this should remain untapped. I think ICT calls these breakaway gaps. Um, but like this was the start of the breakout was this massive move, fair value gap that blasted through this high. This should not get filled if we're really strong. So something like Solana, you know, into there maybe, right? Um, similar to Ethereum, like this is a little harder because it's just so fucking aggressive to the upside. Um, but you know, I, I would watch maybe here. And then ultimately there, but again, I don't think I don't think we should fill. Like I think on a different time frame, I can probably see the gap better. Yeah, like this, maybe even the daily. I think that. Yeah, I mean, how far does that bring you down? Ten. Yeah, it's about that. Like, that's as low as it. I think it goes. It should go, um, you know, down there. I don't think it should come below here if it's really strong. Um, another thing of note, right, the higher we pump without a correction. So, like, right now, this fucking move is 20 plus percent, just vertical. Um, the higher we pump without a correction, the larger the eventual correction will be, right? So... Where is a good example of this? Um, here, right? 50, like basically a 50 plus percent move without a real correction. We had a little one there. Then you get the big fatty, right? And this works both directions, downside as well. Same thing here, right? This thing just kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going. Almost 100% move. Boom, you get your you know 20% correction. Uh, where are some more examples of this? Uh, here, perfect example, right? 150% straight up, then you get the 30% pullback, right? So the longer it goes up, the more aggressive the downside is going to be. As we continue to trade higher, you're going to see more people pile in with leverage as well. So we're going to start getting a lot of leverage wipes. So as opposed to just these kind of high time frame pullbacks, this is a pullback, right? This is a large high time frame correction. But if you go back here, and you look at the low time frames. Is it not going to let me go that far back? Right? You're going to get a lot of these. Okay? And it doesn't seem like much. Right? Like, so here's the actual correction here, right? 30%. But you can see here, we went up 150%. The high time frame, this looks vertical, right? But on the low time frame, you can see we get these little fucking pullbacks. You get these kind of wicks, right, that are nasty. And uh, if you're trading with high leverage, this is a four-hour candle, right, that traded down 8%. Okay, and then it immediately went back up. 
from here to here, this is like within the same, this is like what, 12 hour period, drops 9% and then proceeds to pump like 20. So we're going to get these crazy volatile moves that are going to be really, 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 really tricky if you're over levered because you're going to end up puking on something like this, right? Only for it to fully reverse and then trade higher. Same thing here, right? You're going to puke, you're going to puke, and then it's just going to go up. Right, so you got to be very careful. The higher we go, the more vertical the move, the harder it's going to be to play things with leverage if you don't know what you're doing. And I don't want you to get sucked into what you see online. Most of the people you see online who are posting these crazy stuff, one, you always got to question the veracity of it. Is it even real? Are they actually taking these trades? Two, there's a very good chance some of these people have a lot more money than you. They're a lot more experienced at what they're doing. They understand the risk and things like that. Um, and three, most people only post their winners, right? Not a lot of people are posting when they get shit wrong. They love to post, Hey dude, I ran up 200 K to a mill. They don't tell you how many times 200 K went to zero before that happened. So just keep everything like, and, and I wrote that big thread on this, the longer and higher and crazier things get, you're going to feel more emotions. You're going to feel more FOMO. Right? It's going to be very hard to keep your fucking head on straight because you're going to have people screaming at you that the bull run's just getting started. You better buy now. You don't want to miss out. And I'm not saying don't buy. I'm not saying don't be bullish. I've been a big bull, right? I'm just saying you got to fucking keep it in check because at the end of the day, um, <laughs> you'd be shocked at how many people, even though the market is going up, they're losing money. And the main reason they're doing that is going back to what I said at the start of the video is they're fucking around with leverage, right? If the market is just going up week after week and you're just holding spot, you're winning, right? But if you're trying to be pretty and catch all these little moves with leverage and you don't really know what you're doing, you can end up fucking losing money even though the market's going higher. And that's a really shitty feeling. So hope that's helpful for you guys. I'll have another video tomorrow. I'm uh, going to go lick my peanut wounds that sounded weird uh but my wounds over another fumbled almost eight figure bag fuck me right uh but yeah these helps you guys know what to do leave comments in the description leave comments in below thumbs up nice comments stuff on twitter i love to see it talk to you guys soon peace oh and by the way don't let me forget breakout option option to use right now if you're trading with leverage or you're fucking heart set on trading with leverage you're like i have to trade with leverage i gotta i gotta i gotta i can't not trade with leverage um and uh you don't want to risk your own money use breakout you can trade with leverage trade like you're trading perps get all that upside and the downside the fix the downside is fixed whatever you put in for the evaluation that's the most you can lose you're not going to nuke your account so check it out if you got any questions let me know Peace out, guys.